Welcome, time for some art fun. Today, we're going to do our third episode of my ginormous sketchbook tour. This time we skip from 15 to 16, but we have two 16s. So one of these is really 15. Sun was March 13th to April. So this was the real 15. Low pressure pen and ink sketchbook. This is a lot of notes about my fountain pens. I was just getting into fountain pens and I just took a bunch of notes about them. This is Singapore from Google Earth, an idea that uh, Tio Yi Chi gave me um, during the pandemic. That was something that he proposed people do. Just a bunch of little doodles. Peter draws eye. This is where I just started using my giant marker that I showed in one of my prior videos. And I just went in, no sketching, no nothing. And this was my low pressure, just go in with pen and just experiment. So that's what we're gonna see now. And you can see that some of these, I'm trying not to lift my pen at all. Some of these came out in a way that I liked. Some of them didn't. Some of them were a little weird. <laughs> some of them were really cool. I really like that. Shadows with a Tombow. And that really made a difference to me. <laughs> this is a park that I was parked at with my husband. This is, you know, pandemic time. So we were parking and just hanging out in the car, either reading or draw. I was drawing. He would drum with his drumsticks sometimes. <laughs> This is Peter Draws. I did this one in purple pencil. One thing I noticed about this sketchbook is I was able to do pretty much all original stuff with no pressure. Whereas in my other sketchbooks, when I'm trying to make finished pieces or pretty pieces, I almost always was copying. <laughs> cute. Not a well done one, but I think it's cute. Same with this fun whale. It's actually a terrible version of my husband. But yeah, it's funny. I didn't feel any need to make anything original until I started the YouTube channel and focused on, oh, this has to be purely my stuff if I'm going to be making videos about them. <laughs> this is just a pen test page. I was just in the middle of learning about fountain pens from Goulet Pens at the time. I love this one. I did this one with a Pit Artist pen in a brown color. I don't remember which one of them. I love this one. A historical book my inks that I was starting to collect. I hope you can see that color. Happy owl, I love this owl. Love this beautiful girl. Little cute bunny. These are starting to be in fountain pen, if you can't tell. <laughs> Just having fun with my, this is my dog. <laughs> A little fountain pen turtle doodle. Scarlett Johansson. This is the problem when you go in with pen without sketching first, is you can't can't bring it back. That's another actress, and I can't remember her name, but I'm sure someone will tell me. Funny little owl with a hat on. Another Brian Goulet while I was watching his um, videos. An urban sketch. Pretty girl. Loved this one. This is purple ink. Another one of my husband pen test. Okay, here's where I had stuck in some craft paper to where I had ripped out blank pages. And I really liked how that one came out. The Twisby Go had to draw it. Another start of a sketch of my husband. <laughs> Another pretty girl. Some more fountain pen stuff. Another fun house. I was having a lot of fun drawing houses back then. I think that's it for number 15, mislabeled 16. It was a blank journal at Barnes and Noble, no brand name. It didn't hold up very well, really cheap paper, not a sketchbook really, um, just converted it to one. This is a Travelogue Handbook Co. sketchbook. This one was from April to June of this year. This is a sketch, one of my first on location urban sketches, as opposed to from a picture. That's Palmer Lake in Colorado, another one from Palmer Lake. This is Frisco in Colorado. These are some Aspens. I really like how that came out. Yeah. I like how that came out. It's just pen and ink. Another one. <laughs> I was taking the sketchbook school book course and it said to draw some things just from your brain. And I was so excited that I was able to draw all that just from my brain. It was called How to Draw Without Talent by Danny Gregory, Sketchbook School. That was the first assignment. This was the second assignment. So you'll see a lot of those. 
This is my ink and my new pens that I've gotten. These are just doodles, again, from the sketchbook assignments. Background negative space. This is in my kitchen, where you just draw around the object instead of trying to draw the actual object. Those are, that's my foot. Peter draws, my dog. I did a lot of my dog. My dog, my dog, my dog. <laughs> this is a whole spread of just my puppy sleeping. <laughs> this is my backyard. A house in Fountain Pen, a Cafe Rio. That's a restaurant that I go to a lot. <laughs> a really cute koala. I did the background in Fountain Pen Ink. It's called Capri Blue by Monteverde Ink. And then I did a little drawing of my dog when he was just a puppy. And this is him again. <laughs> Another Cafe Rio draw. A Garden of the Gods drawing. An item for my kitchen table. Just a vase with some flowers. A pretty girl. A guy on a podcast that I was listening to, a Qdoba drawing. <laughs> These are live sketches that I did of people at restaurants. That's my husband, for sure. And that's just an owl that I added. Everyone else were actual people at restaurants. This looks like the Unabomber, but he was actually a perfectly fine, perfectly fine. There's Herc, um, Lee Ellickson's bird. My husband again, bad drawing. This is a... <laughs> hilarious drawing of my husband he and I crack up over this he took like a silly picture and then I just exaggerated everything really ridiculously and that's another picture of him that's definitely more like what he looks like and a Shiba Inu probably from Lee Ellickson or just at least inspired by her and then it shows through the pen shows through this paper so I just drew it again the overlap of the two I like to do that sometimes and that's Sandy Hester I was watching her videos again Okay, this is from Sketching People, Lynn Chapman. That's a book I was reading at the time. This is Ankapora, one of her full spreads. I copy with um, Arteza brush pens again, Arteza Real brush pens. Another person, another person. That's my beautiful Pentel pocket brush pen. Live sketch at Black Hawk Trail, which is a trail in the mountains in Colorado. I just stood there at this river and sketched that. These two, I did these there as well. This is a rock formation. This is a dead tree. I had a lot of fun with those. More ink and then just stuff on top. These are from Sandy Hester. She did this really beautiful iris series and I loved it so much and I thought it would do so nicely with my fountain pen ink. So I just uh, drew them in my sketchbook, which I think she sold out of those. She was selling them. These are, you know, this is what I'm doing at that point, just doodling. These were when I was trying to use up my vintage pastels I wasn't so happy with. <laughs> this is my aloe plant on my, this is now on my kitchen table. It's overtaken the other potted plant. A really kind of creepy owl. I don't usually do creepy art, but that came out a little creepy and a fun person. And fountain pen ink is not waterproof generally. Unless it's it, The exception is when it's waterproof. So I just apply a water brush to do that sometimes to my fountain pen drawings and I really like it. Some acrylic, I'd gotten plain old shiny acrylic for once. I'm sure that was inspired by Natasha Newton. This is a Lee Ellickson. I did it in watercolor pencil. This was around when I got gifted those watercolor pencils. And this is just from a picture I saw. I thought it was so funny. It looked like a, um, a guinea pig about to sneeze. <laughs> just some eye practice, another Lee Ellickson drawing. A really funny bird with a bunch of fountain pen ink. I put so much fountain pen ink, it really went through on this side. So this is also fountain pen ink, a little koala, a little seren like kind of a Serengeti. <laughs> These are more Sandy Hesters. These are in really thick paint. These were so much fun. I loved this series. I think she called it like Overboard. I've gone overboard or something. A super fun um, artist vlog series. Definitely watch that. It is. These are from that as well. I just loved it so much, I had to put it in my sketchbook. That's kind of how I, how I roll. People on a Zoom meeting. Again, it's a Sandy Hester idea. She introduced me to the idea that you could actually draw faces while you're on a Zoom meeting. And I know <laughs> really cute owls. This is probably my favorite page in this whole sketchbook. Just some really cute owls that I was watching videos of owls. <laughs> this one's from a picture of an owl. A couple of little elephants some more Sandy Hester Iris inspiration. 
And that's it. Then just a bunch of pen tests at the end of sketchbook true sketchbook 16 to sketchbook 17, which is the Etcher Labs perfect sketchbook in cold press A5 size was from April 5th to July 8th. Love this fox. I loved this little guy with a nut. <laughs> I did love how the watercolor looked on this paper. Absolutely, but it's very expensive and more animals. This is a stamp set and I just filled it in. It's a really beautiful stamp set, but I don't have the stamp set. I just drew this out. I just sketched it out. I saw a picture of the stamp set and I was like, ooh, I want that. So I just, just drew those bottles based on a stamp set I saw. Ian Family, OMG, how gorgeous. This is one of my favorite pages in this whole sketchbook. This is one of his, I just saw this picture, how vibrant. I mean, look how beautiful. I love how he does those black blacks and then a lot of really vibrant reds and oranges. I love this spread. And this is all Ian Family, all of it. This is another Ian Fennelly, and then this is one where I tried to do it myself. That's, again, something that I try to do is if I'm following an artist, then I'll try to do it myself after a while, but uh, fail <laughs> compared to him. Come on. He's so good. Another Ian Fennelly. Gorgeous. Oh, come on. I liked this one. This has a lot of fountain pen ink in it, and it, it just did a really good job on this paper. Cute animals. I love, <laughs> I love owls. Guys, it's a thing. Owls are my thing. I loved this woman. I thought she looked beautiful. I love how she came out. Little koala bear. These are a couple of Lee Ellickson copies. She has these in her studio, or she did for a while. I don't know if she still does. And I, lo I love this frog. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> this frog to me is the epitome of wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> and I liked this bird. I liked the fluffy head. A little fluffy bear. Really fun ink owl. I love how that came out. I'll probably make that again, but look at that foot. <laughs> I love that owl. And just a fun, really fun ink wash. And then just a test page. And I have some test cards in the back from some of these inks. These are all inks. I love fountain pen ink. And that's it for sketchbook 17. Okay, sketchbook 18 is so big I had to lift the camera. So this is a moleskin watercolor sketchbook. I started it July 9th and it ended October 8th. This was just another Natasha Newton rain cloud while I tested out some Daniel Smith watercolor. This is an ink page. I was just playing with ink. I hate that tree, but I love this the ink blotches. This was a Lee Ellickson inspired doodle. Um, again, just watching her and how she would just have fun on her pages. And she, she likes to sometimes to do these color palette pieces at the edge. And this was just some testing for, for an, another piece. Another Ankapura spread. I loved this video. How cute. I love how she does this. Like they look how her art sometimes just looks like stickers. She's so good, guys, cute little bunny. And I wish I'd even left it without the background, but then look how little it would have been on this giant page. I wasn't ready for such giant pages and I wasn't using both sides. So I really didn't make the best use of this sketchbook. It was a little too big for me. These little <laughs> same perturbed owl. This is the Gorge in Washington state. It's a gorgeous venue to watch concerts and I took a picture from our seats and then took it home and painted this and I love how this came out. I really love this. I'm thinking about, since it's already basically coming out, I'll probably rip it out and frame it. I love it. You know what? I'm doing it now. This is a beautiful lady. I got to use my gold shimmery paints. I love how this came out. This one, I found a picture of this little raccoon and made this with my Da Vinci paints. I love how this little guy came out. So I started getting a little bit of nerve. Just some botanical fun. I wanted to use up some of this ink. These two inks I don't like drawing with, but I like painting with them. This is another Natasha Newton inspired one. I'm obsessed with this whole page. I love her. Oh my gosh, her style. 
good. It's so good. Okay. And that's it for 18. So yeah, this is what I would call a major scaredy pants one. I would never get this sketchbook again because I wasn't able to be super creative. And the other thing in here that I ripped out was the portrait that I've shown a million times in my studio. So those two were in here. The Lee Ellickson sticker on the cover of sketchbook 19. So let's take a look. Sketchbook 19 took me longer to fill, but it was so much fun. July 9th to October 20th. Little owl, sad owl. I was designing my patio, just a little um, watercolor pencil sketch. A little dog, someone else's dog. I really like that paint. A red panda. <laughs> now we're getting into some stuff I really loved. So this is the hedgehog that's in my sort of channel introduction. A really funny owl. Look how self-satisfied that owl is. A little somewhat sad bunny. A really cute happy owl. A red panda. A little funny bunny with his little tush in the air. A let go and sketch sketch of the ink that was on my desk. A bunny. Another red panda with Karen Dash pencil. Really cute bird that I did again on the other side because it does show through. So I just sketched, I basically used this sketch as an outline for this sketch and then painted it with watercolor. And this is a red panda. Some people at the airport. Masks were a big thing. And then my dog, I did this on the airplane. This is one of my favorite things I've ever done. And this was the first time I was ever out and about and someone said, oh my gosh, are you an artist? You're good. That was the first time. I never, YouTube was barely a glint in my brain and my eye, my mind's eye. <laughs> barely a glint in my mind's eye when I made this. And then I did, again, it, I could see it through the other side, so I did this side just in pen. And then I did this hilarious owl. I love this owl. Owls are definitely my favorite subject. Then I did this Highland cow that everyone does. Very popular reference. I did this page when I got home in marker. It's my dog hanging out on our deck. <laughs> Little sweet, happy face. My dog that I drew again when I got home. Some really funny doodles. The only one I like is that sloth. Everyone else kind of got messed up. But look how cute and happy this sloth is. And this was the spread I did on the plane ride home. So I loved having this in black and white, a little sloth, and then his little black and white arm tickling this funny little hedgehog and some bamboo on the side. I love that spread. A not impressed owl, very not impressed. Like, look at that face. Is it gonna focus? <laughs> and like a little bit friendlier owl. <laughs> I hated this otter, so I just wrote no because I really messed it up. And one of my really adorable animals that made it into my channel like my channel in eight seconds video. I love that one, so cute and chubby. I love that baby. A really cute, a really cute dog. And this one is another one that I did on this side because I could see it through, so cute. And I just, my husband said it looks like he's walking along the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> my dog in that multicolored magic pencil, the Koei Noir magic pencil. Pretty lady. Just trying to use up those. <laughs> Vintage pastels, funny owl and marker, looks shocked. <laughs> this is supposed to be a hedgehog, but looks like a dog pig hedgehog. I don't know what happened. This is just walking around my neighborhood. Sandy Hester gave me the idea to just take one marker and my little sketchbook and walk around my neighborhood and sketch as I walked my dog. And I loved that idea. I did it a couple of different days, but this was my favorite day. That's the final one. Friend who does that Just So Life channel, um, I'll link it again. I have a plaid blanket from her with moose on it. So I just did a plaid moose. <laughs> another iris. Another iris. Another little watercolor, you know, doodle of a landscape. A pretty girl. I love how this came out in that Karen Dash pencil. A person. Just trying to doodle some botanicals and failing. But then look what happens when you combine them. I love it. That's one of my favorite things about the fact that you can see through this paper is it gives me crazy ideas for stuff I wouldn't have normally done. A bunny spread. I love this spread. Love it. Just drawing at a craft fair. Little bunny. I love that bunny. 
This is, we're starting to get into Sarah Burns' studio. I just found her when I did this, and this was one of her spreads, and I just tried to do it. Look how many different techniques she does. Like, this is just a straight up copy from a poorly done because it's in my cheap sketchbook and stuff, but she, it's a beautiful spread that just inspired me to do this fall color thing, just a doodle. This is a plein air that I did near my house. I love how that came out. Love it. Another neighborhood sketch. This is a tree that was changing colors in my neighborhood. I watercolored it when I got back. I just um, drew it in pen on the walk and then came back and watercolored it. I love how that came out. Got Posca pens for the first time. I just got these two colors. I wanted to do something with them, so I made this. Love this one. <laughs> this is a Sarah Burns studio that I did while I was watching one of her videos. I just wanted to use some more of that acrylic paint. And Sarah Burns Studios, I was obviously watching, so I was getting inspired with these landscapes. This is another Sarah Burns Studio painting that she did, and I just tried to copy. I love her style, honey. Mm, love it. A test page, I like to leave my test pages for the back, if I can, if I can remember. I thought I would do Inktober, and then I decided not to. <laughs> And more test page. And that's it for sketchbook 19. I'll sketchbook number 20. I'm currently working in this one. I have two pages left and I also have my travel sketchbook that's just like this. It just has a different sticker on the front that I picked for th that I've been doing my travel videos in. This one is the Alpha series from Stillman and Byrne. I started it October 8th of this year and I haven't finished it yet. I'm almost done. These, I just wrote all the details about this sketchbook because it's not in here unless you write it down or um, glue, glue in. Just have a little swatch area where I tested out all the supplies that I was thinking I would use in this sketchbook to see how they fared. This is a Natasha Newton paint along. A bonfire right there in the middle. Uh, but everything else is, other than these dots, um, are basically just straight from her tutorial, but it's not an exact copy, so I wrote inspired, but it is a complete follow along of a video she has on YouTube that, that I absolutely love. This is an inspired Natasha Newton. That bird isn't her style of bird, it's my style of animal, but the, the setup was based on one of her paintings. I love painting along with her. This is a Natasha Newton copy. I love her style. I love her work. This is off of a picture of like a photograph. So it's an original painting based on a photo. Now we're into Sarah Burns Studio. When I found Sarah Burns Studio on YouTube, I was like, okay, I'm finally super inspired to do landscapes. You know from watching any of the previous videos, I wasn't super inspired to do landscapes over time. I was much more about cute animals and portraits, but she got me into even feeling comfortable making an original piece from my head, no picture reference or anything. So that's a rare thing for me. So Sarah Burns is super inspirational. Is her photo that she took on her, um, it's, I don't know if it's a photo, but I basically I took a screenshot of one of her videos and painted this. She paints this repeatedly on her channel, but this isn't a copy of one of her paintings. It's a painting based on her style and her reference photo. I did this original bunny in a curl gouache that became this bunny sticker from my red bubble shop. I love this one. This is a copy, a Sarah Burns studio copy. I was so stinking inspired by Sarah Burns watching this video in bed at six o'clock in the morning. I literally leapt out of bed watching her make this, went to my studio and started painting when the sun was still down. That's how inspired Sarah Burns made me to make landscapes, like she's amazing. It's another Sarah Burns landscape. Fit her whole name, so I just wrote SBS. But like, see what I mean? She's so inspirational. This is another Sarah Burns studio. I painted along with her video. So basically she was sitting in front of this rock and painting it, so I painted with her. This is a polar bear snuggle. This is pretty much the day I decided to start the YouTube channel. And so everything, this is another Sarah Burns inspired piece, literally watching her videos while making that stuff. 
And then we get into my YouTube channel. So this was my first ever video. I did like a sketch along and sketched these adorable polar bears snuggling. And I told a story about my mom and how patient she was with me. And this is the next one I did. It's a little guinea pig and I did my Turner acrylic gouache paints and I'm, obs this might be one of my favorite pieces I've ever made. I love this piece. And I have the sticker of this. I ordered my own sticker off of Redbubble and I love how this came out. And I think it looks so cute on this Strathmore sketchbook that I'm gonna be using. So I'm excited about that. Just as my owl, my yellow owl painting was really the start of my original style, this was the continuation and I started to get really comfortable with this sort of more graphic style, especially the graphic backgrounds. Like this is another example. This is a watercolor Sharpay I did the video of. There's a paint along video, draw along video of that with me. There's a watercolor paint along of this corgi. And I look at these in a row and I'm like, okay, wow, I, I did it. I found my style. It's so satisfying. This was when I got my new gouache paints and I just did a bunch of mixing because I realized when I was painting the test piece right here, that is like so brown heavy that I hadn't ordered any browns. <laughs> and so I was just mixing and testing to see what kind of neutrals I could make with my new gouache palette. And that's the piece that I did. There's a video with tons of gouache is the text above them. I love them. I'll probably make this a sticker too, because I think this is so, so, so cute. Super proud of that. This was a watercolor paint along of this owl. I love how this came out. I watched my last sketchbook tour and really didn't put together how many owls I've made. It's definitely my number one subject. It really is amazing to me how far I've come. I love this owl and I think it's so cute. I'm really proud of it. This was just a fall landscape. I'd kind of gotten way deep into animals and had left the landscapes behind that I was doing with Sarah Burns. And I didn't want to like fully leave it behind. So I just pulled this reference photo off of Pixabay and painted this in my watercolor. This is a chipmunk in gouache, acryl gouache and uh, regular gouache. And I love how this came out and I love the texture on those bricks. And this is another paint along. I think I called it something like what what's wrong with my gouache and you'll see why <laughs> when you watch that video. This was my Karen Dash Neo Color 2 video, my first one. I, this was my first piece I'd ever done as a whole piece in the Karen Dash Neo Color 2s and I fell in love with them immediately. I loved this making this. It was a really fun cool process. You just you feel like a kid again when you use those crayons. This is one of my favorite videos I've ever done because my husband and I are on there singing together and he didn't know I was recording while I got him and I say in his natural habitat because he's very introverted. I'm very extroverted, he's an introvert and to catch him being himself, like proof of what he's really like with me alone in the house for people to know him the way I know him, it was just such a pleasure. And so I, that's the video I rewatch the most is this little bunny video. These are my goat sisters. Um, if you watch that video that I made, my sister and I are born on the same day, two years apart. So I was born on her birthday. And so I just made this little sister goats chomping on some hay, sitting in front of a single present. And I just had in my mind that this is my sister saying like, yeah, that's my present, back off. And me being like, well, well what about me? Where's my present? <laughs> so I love that video too. This is a watercolor koala bear. I love how this koala came out. Although I shouldn't say koala bear. I don't know if you saw this comment, but on this video, I had someone from Australia say, you know, cute koala, but FYI, they're not actually bears. And I was like, oh my God, I literally didn't know that. I thought they were bears. I thought they were a type of bear. I mean, look at the claws. It's so funny. So I just thought that was so interesting. This one I didn't do a video on. I just wanted to do a portrait and I'll do that kind of on my own because this channel is called Creating Cute Art. So anything that's not like cute, a cute animal, I don't usually do a video on. But I know this looks like Ziggy Stardust or something, but I basically put the eye in the wrong spot and it ruined everything. So I just covered it up. <laughs> this is the Sui Gouache tutorial slash evaluation piece. I love this little foxy boy. He's so cute and I love his shadow. And I love that I'm still being influenced by Sarah Burns in even caring about that much of a detail on the background. <laughs> 
So I just love her so much. She has made a huge difference to my art style and to my art life. So inspirational to me. I love her. I watch every video she puts out. This was my Blick Matte Acrylic painting, test painting of a baby rhino. You guys voted for the rhino on Instagram and I thought that was such a cool experience to be able to interact with you and hear what you wanted to see next. I love how this one came out. Such a little happy boy. <laughs> and this I had been waiting and waiting to paint. I saw this cute little bunny in a reference photo and I just wanted to make this graphic background, solid colors on top of a cup, just being cute as can be. And this remains one of my absolute favorite paintings ever. Then on one of my off days for YouTube, I just drew this. I took one of my Caran d'Ache pencils and drew these cats. And then I went over them with watercolor, very light wash of watercolor just to seal the pencil. That's what I'll do. I learned that from Hello Alice here on YouTube, that you can seal your pencil drawings by just going over them with a very light wash of watercolor. And then I went over them with Posca pen outline to make them pop. And I made this Posca pen and colored pencil ball of yarn for this guy to look at. <laughs> this is one of my more recent paint along with me videos. This is a Christmas kitty looking at some twinkle lights. This was such a fun painting and I love how this little girl came out. Look how pretty she is. I love that kitty. This is my funny owl. I picture this owl as like a colonial like from Hamilton, like this is a Hamilton extra with his little arms slash wings behind his back and one of his little legs forward and he looks so serious. <laughs> so if next time you see this painting on my site, you'll know that's what I was thinking. Like he's saying, hoo hoo, here, here, come together, you know, something. <laughs> he's having a little debate on the floor. But um, what he's debating is what's better, Crayola water soluble oil pastels or Caran d'Ache Neo Color 2 water soluble wax pastels. So this was a test painting where I did half in one material and half in the other to see how they fared. And I loved that video is a really fun one. I really loved making that. This is one of my off of YouTube sketches. This is just I had just gotten my beautiful bent nib fountain pens that I did in my mini haul, my most recent mini haul. And this bent nib is what I did this entire drawing with. It made all these different marks, all these different line variation marks. And I really just wanted to draw something that would show off that Sailor Fude Nib pen. This is a little koala bear sketch. It's actually based off of another sketch I made in my cheap sketchbook, and I just wanted to do it bigger and a little bit different with different materials. I used Posca pen, colored pencil, really fun. And I have a plan for this page that I'm gonna actually paint either today or tomorrow, a very detailed plan that I journaled about and I can't wait to make, but that's the end of the final sketchbook. I have another sketchbook I'm about almost halfway through downstairs, but I'm gonna wait to sketchbook tour that one when it's completely done. So thank you so much for joining me for this sketchbook tour. This is the end of the ginormous 20 sketchbooks sketchbook tour. And I have to say, this was a lot of fun. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you had fun with me. <laughs> and I hope that you will subscribe to this channel if you're new. I hope that you'll like this video if you enjoyed it. Leave me a comment with your favorite piece from this last installment. And tell me if you enjoyed seeing my journey from brand new beginner, just copying for practice and relaxation, assuming no one's ever going to see it, and basically learning from masters on YouTube like Sandy Hester and Natasha Newton and Sarah Burton Studio and Lee Ellickson and Tio Yi Chi and Ian Fennelly and all the other people, Mr. Musette, all the other people that I've referenced in these videos. Um, into someone who actually has their own style and can create from scratch and, and is making it kind of an integral part of my life, not just in my personal life, but in my career. I really am happy that you were able to join me for this. Thank you so much. And until next time, remember, create something cute.